this is really a big deal, guys. Uh, it's what, it, we started out pretty light, but this is a huge deal. So Justin Trudeau is imposing the authoritarian, and I would say even fascist, Emergencies Act, okay? And this is a really big deal because it's setting a gigantic precedence. And we got here because a lot of people on the left were cheering it on because they didn't believe okay, in the fight. ideology of the truckers, because they didn't like these people. So um, the left has been very hypocritical throughout this. So let's hear what he said in response when he was asked about this action. These financial penalties that are underway for folks who are out there under the Emergencies Act, is this a step too far? Is it too harsh? Uh, this is something that is important for Canadians to know that there will be consequences for people who are breaking the law and people who are supporting those who are breaking the law. Uh, the Emergencies Act is something that is uh, proportional and responsible to move forward with to indicate that these blockades uh, should be done and people should go home. Okay, so people were breaking the law by protesting, I guess. There's no legal basis for this, by the way. Uh, well, what he's supporting doing- Supporting the people breaking the law too, fam, is against the thing, so don't say which anything is, to lock it up. The, that's the, it, it, it was already bad enough, but now you're, you're going after people for supporting it, for donating to them. We're gonna get into that really quickly. Let's hear what this woman has to say, because this woman, I mean, this is full on authoritarianism. Like, this is just, uh, this is scary, but it is where we're headed. This is where we were always headed. So let, let's listen to what she said. The government is issuing an order with immediate effect under the Emergencies Act, authorizing Canadian financial institutions to temporarily cease providing financial services where the institution suspects that an account is being used to further the illegal blockades and occupations. This order covers both personal and corporate accounts. Third, we are directing Canadian financial institutions to review their relationships with anyone involved in the illegal blockades and report to the RCMP or CSIS. As of today, a bank or other financial service provider will be able to immediately freeze or suspend an account without a court order. In doing so, they will be protected against civil liability for actions taken in good faith. Federal government institutions will have a new broad authority to share relevant information with banks and other financial service providers to ensure that we can all work together to put a stop to the funding of these illegal blockades. So essentially they're seizing people's assets, seizing their bank accounts to stop them from funding or from participating in anything that they deem is uh, terrible, not just the occupation now, anything that is going to undermine the supposed government. Pasta, anything to say before we move on? Well, I mean, I have a lot to say, so I think we should get through some of it and towards the end, I'll kind of yeah. hold my, I'm just taking notes so I don't stop us. But yeah, there's a lot to unpack here, fam, yeah. because I think it's just not just, not just what the government's doing, but you know, we've also talked about the cheerleading from the from the so-called progressives of sorts. And I don't want to get into the left-right divide all yeah. the time, but we, we talked about that and the consequences that come with this situation. So let's get through this, and then as we get towards the end, we'll we'll have a nice little you know powwow about it about how it's really the effect that this has, not just from the perspective of what the government Canadian government's doing, but the perspective of how people are kind of supporting and backing this. So yeah, yeah. So um, Eva Bartlett put out anyone in Canada who supports further or furthers the freedom convoy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or any other social media platform is a target to have their bank accounts frozen and insurance policies nullified. So this is what she's quoting from this video that goes over the uh, Canada.ca department, right? It, it, it's directly exactly what is in this Emergencies Act. And they're using, uh, they were using, I believe, the, um, the Terrorist Financing Act to go after also cryptocurrencies, which is a whole other big deal as well. So uh, just this part right here, 
the government is issuing an order with immediate effect under the Emergencies Act authorizing Canadian financial institutions to temporarily cease providing financial services where the institution suspects that an account is being used to further any illegal blockades and occupations, both personal and corporate accounts. And they're also directing Canadian financial institutions to reveal their relationship with anyone involved in their illegal blockades and report to the RCMP or the CSIS. So not only are they uh, targeting people based on suspicion alone, which is completely devoid of any due process, but they are also targeting people who have relationships with those people. This is essentially the worst like outcome in terms of what is a police state, what is going to turn people against each other and, and create more of what we've been seeing here in America after January 6th in the United States after January 6th is people outing their family members for being at the Capitol. So it's kind of like that, but on steroids. So let's hear a little bit of the audio from this that kind of surmises that. Now, think about what happened out in Canada. What did they do? Well, they triggered the Canadian Emergency Measures Act to eliminate protest. This is what they did. And this is going to target individual citizens in Canada and their bank accounts. So they've authorized the banks, financial institutions, and insurance carriers to suspend the accounts of Canadian citizens based on their social media postings, if they don't like what you're saying, the banks can shut down your account. So yes, you read this correctly. Anyone in Canada, individual or business, who supports or furthers the Freedom Convoy or Freedom Protest on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or any other social media platform, is a target to have their bank accounts frozen and insurance policies nullified. But it gets worse than that. Not only are people subject to get their bank accounts frozen, but the decision also to freeze the accounts is entirely up to the reviewer, and the reviewer is protected by the government from civil liability for their decision. So if someone in the bank looks and says, yeah, I don't like this, the way this person's speaking. I don't like their political view. I don't like the way they're helping or supporting the people who are protesting because they want their freedom back. They're protected and they can just shut you down. So a banking employee who, do, who does not like the politics of a customer as revealed by a review of their social media postings and merely suspects the account holder of supporting or furthering their actions can, without any liability, block the bank accounts of any customer or account holder. And they do not need to provide an explanation. This is economic tyranny. Exactly. Um, I mean, this is insane. This is utter ins insanity. I don't understand why people aren't like screaming how insane this is. And by the way, take, they can take away their insurance so where, where, oh, they have health care for all. Canada has health care for all. Where does fucking having health care for all leave you when if somebody doesn't like your opinion or your ideology or where you stand on whatever issue, they can literally come after your assets, take away your, your health care. They can take away pretty much your whole fucking life just because they don't like you. Any of these morons that hate us could literally go and do that if they're serving in some sort of position of power. This is this is insanity. This is like what a lot of these so-called socialists and leftists want on steroids because they they're under this like demented thought process that doing this is going to weed out all the fascists that this is they're just going after fascists and we're just going to go after them. Yay, let's go after the fascists. No, you are a fascist. This is what fascism is. They warped reality and they propagandize people so much that they turned, they made them believe that becoming little fascist is some sort of virtuous like role they have to play. It's 
utter insanity. Well, yeah, it, it begs the question that, like, you know, when a lot of people have this uh, ideology battle, you know, we talk to even people on the right, the conservatives and stuff like that, about, oh, capitalism, you know, it's about freedom, and you get to say what you want and do what you want. But what have we been saying the whole time, fam? And the only reason why I always push for that mixed economy is because it doesn't make a difference. You live into a capitalist system, a communist system, and I'm not saying one's better than the other, but a predator class, an elitist class can yeah. get a hold of stuff. I know you were, but I'm not. <laughs> I, I I believe there's good in everything and bad in everything uh, in all these systems. But the whole thing is at the end of the day, there's a ruling class atop of that system that could, you know, interject straight fucking fascism by way of author authoritarianism and control. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Really, to tell you the truth, the eye has to be on the, the issue that's there. And that is that predator ruling class. That is the issue. That is what we need to handle. And after that, we can get in a room and decide what's best for all of us. But when you have these people out there who are married to their ideology, who are married to, you know what I'm saying, trying to, to reform one particular side that they feel is closer to their own beliefs, we're just going to be keep, we're just gonna continue to be just falling in the mud all the time because we're not handling the real issue out here. You know, you're going to play some stuff that we, that's going to kind of tie it all together about what Justin Trudeau's elk is all about and where he comes from. And that should make light bulbs go up and go, oh, he's part of that clan. So it doesn't make a difference, socialism, democratic socialism, capitalism, blah, 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 blah. When there's a ruling class and they can control things and they can censor voices by way of fascism, we're all screwed. Yeah, we're all screwed, but how did they get there? They got there through empire, through through conquering of lands, through conquering massive wealth. And the 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 the, the other the other part of it is. It's not real. The whole point of communism is, is, is supposed to be, the goal is supposed to be a stateless society. Um, and this is not that. So what they're doing is they're sort of maligning, they're, they're taking things from the ideology of communism that, okay, you, you, ever, you have access to everything, it's easy and blah, 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 but they're putting it in a privatized manner like the World Economic Forum, which is what we're talking about, the Fourth Industrial Revolution. So these two ideologies have been existing, mm -hmm. capitalism, communism. And, and, and so I think this is the epitome of, of capitalism because this is imperialism. But regardless of that, right, if we, these two ideologies are existing, they've warped communist ideology in these people to, to make it resemble fascism to the point where the right, and anybody that you go interview that's more leaning on the right is going to say, this is Trudeau's communism coming in. When it's not, it's actually more authoritarianism and fascism, but it's because these people, these little fascist leftists are acting out, they're making that reality true. So these two, these two things have existed and they've warped into a merger of, of, an, of like an actual just dystopian nightmare because the, the, they're using elements of both to create this sort of fake utopia that's not a utopia at all. It is a complete and total nightmare. And, and that's the problem. That's why it doesn't really get us anywhere when we're talking about, you know, what is, what is communism? Because to me, this isn't communism at all, but it's so maligned that it is, if we're gonna get lost in the debate, um, meanwhile, this is still happening. This is still, this fascistic authoritarian, like inception, is still happening. So let's listen to what Klaus Schwab says about the World Economic Forum young global leader, Damn. Justin Trudeau. It's Klaus. Klaus. Yeah. As you know, Prime Minister, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, friends. As you know, the theme of this annual meeting is Mastering the Fourth Industrial Revolution. I couldn't imagine anybody who could represent more the world which will come out of this Fourth Industrial Revolution. It certainly will be a world, hopefully, not certainly, hopefully, if we take the right decisions, which will be a diverse world characterized by plurality. It will be a world which will draw, combine significant investments into the future, 
into our soft and hard infrastructure with fostering entrepreneurial activity, at the same time social responsibility. It will be a young world. It will be a digital world. Now who could represent such a world better than you, Prime Minister? We are very glad that at the beginning of this meeting you are talking to us to represent also a new open Canada. I want to use this opportunity also to thank our Canadian constituency, which always has been a very loyal and very much engaged constituency here at the Forum. But now, I think with you, together with our constituents, Prime Minister, we can make sure that uh, in the future we strengthen the cooperation even more with your country. Prime Minister, we are very much looking forward to listen to you and actually uh, the discussion will uh, be moderated by my friend Farid. So, um, so who better to usher in the fourth industrial revolution than, I mean, he said it himself in 2016. And by the way, Klaus Schwab is, uh, resembles a literal like villain from any sort of post-apocalyptic movie you've ever seen. I mean, it's just, th this is this is why I genuinely believe we do live in a cartoon. And Steve, is, if, if you're out there, I know you know this, but we really do. Like, and I don't even think it's a cartoon. I think it's a fucking dystopian Black Mirror episode. Um, I'm not as optimistic as you to think it's a fucking cartoon. But like, that, that's where we like reside. And just so out of this, right? A lot of people started figuring this out and saying, this doesn't seem to be about mandates. It doesn't even seem to be about health. It doesn't seem to be about any of that. This seems to be about something else. And so the Canadian trucker said that Trudeau has lost control of the country. And so he is now going into a power grab. They said that the vast majority of the truckers, and this is from Sky News, will remain in downtown Ottawa. State Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's decision to invoke the Emergency Act to quell their protests is a power grab, and it will not deter them. The truckers and their allies who have dubbed themselves the Freedom Convoy say they will not leave until the federal government rolls back some of the COVID restrictions. And the Emergency the Emergencies Act was actually passed in 1988 and has never been invoked but it's going to obviously give not just the government, but police, the police state more power to limit where people are gonna go. And obviously now we, we know exactly how they're gonna do that through freezing their assets. Um, so pasta, it's obviously, this isn't about health. Like, and they, in fact, Trudeau didn't even mention the word mandate or anything to do with COVID in the last few days since he gave his speech. Yeah. Well, at least he's not hiding anymore. We at least get to see him come on with his his bullshit mask and then blame the conservatives and really try to frame this as a blockade, which is just something I really like. I, you got to admire from once again from the uh, from the intelligence apparatus, the way they can kind of like just take certain people and certain teammates and just set them off to go, oh, this is about blockades. Now they're starving people out. And now it's we're going to blame them for this. We're going to use that kind of as motivation. But, I mean, the thing to take with this whole situation is that Klaus Schwab said it right there. This is the fourth industrial revolution. I must kill James Bond and Trudeau, Trudeau will do it. You know, I mean, that's what this is about. That's what some people have been saying, that this isn't really about health. This isn't really about vaccines. This is really about uh, other things. This is about the fourth industrial revolution, which is more about more control. But Trudeau has run into some issues because people, a lot of the, the officials in power in a lot of these provinces and these regions and these cities have decided that they're not going to go along with this. So Trudeau is alone, according to many. The fifth Canadian province abandons the vaccine passports amid crackdowns on the freedom convoys. And this was as of yesterday. And uh, this was on Becker News, and it, they said that his uh, approval rating is collapsing, obviously, and a lot of the, the, 
the, the actions he's taken have backfired. And so Quebec is the latest province to revolt from the Canadian Prime Minister's vaccine passport policy. And Keane Bizet reported Trudeau is alone. Trudeau is alone. On Monday, Quebec Premier uh, Francois Legault met with public health officials Monday night to discuss lifting the province's vaccine passport system. And then, of course, the announcement came on Tuesday afternoon. So Quebec, along with Alberta, Saskatchewan, Prince Edward Island, and Ontario are all rejecting the vaccine passports. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't have to worry about it because, again, they're trying to implement these vaccine passports in other forms. And we that's the next phase, you know, beyond COVID, beyond these vaccine mandates, it's going to be the passports, the digital IDs. That's what we've been saying for a while. This is where this is going to go. And so I don't think it's over by any means, but you can see the resistance of, of how people are pushing back against this and forcing their regional governments to really say, no, we're not going to do this right now. That's left to be determined. I think if people stop and they, you know, they, they don't push back, yeah, they're going to roll right through with it. But I think if, if they see that people are really, um, if people that, Yeah, Fee. Yeah, it's all right. She'll be back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because I was going to say it's it's crazy the way, and when she gets back, we'll let Fee address this, the way they implemented this stuff so quickly in Canada. It's like they try to just get it in through right away, Trudeau. Get it in, get it in, and then if it's there, you know, we, we won't be able to pull back. We won't have to pull back on it because it will be already set in play. In fact, there was a trucker that was going across state lines, country lines, going from the U.S. into Canada. And he talked about this, that when he got there, he's like, no, you, we already pinged you. We saw that, you're, uh, that you, you've that you gotten your vaccine. Go ahead. And he's like, what do you mean? I haven't even showed you shit yet. But they've already got that system in play. They're tracking where people are moving around. That's what this is all about. Um, and, I, and it seems like they tried to implement it quickly and hope that it would stick, but it didn't because now they're pulling back on it. Fam, go right ahead. No, no, I was just saying like they're they're pulling they're pulling back, but I think it's still it's still this is still something people are th these people are gonna push because I think that's the the eventual world economic forum idea is that everybody subjugates themselves to this surveillance vaccine passport situation. Um moving on on that though. I wanted to reemphasize the gravity of what we're experiencing here. Eva Frey said, don't worry, Justin Trudeau isn't calling in the military. He is just authorizing banks to unilaterally freeze your accounts on the basis of suspicion alone. No court order required with legal immunity. I hope everyone realizes much more how much more dangerous this is than the military. Because I, this is something that, that is um, worth pointing out to a lot of the left. So a lot of the left has imagined revolution being just a military fight, right? Like, oh, we're gonna rise up against these fascists and we're gonna fight them militarily. We're gonna off with their heads. We're gonna have all these, you know, th this whole situation. The problem is they didn't take into account the surveillance state. And the surveillance state is a foe that is invisible in a lot of ways. And that pretty much empowers the fascists in power. And I'm talking about the governments, the, the psychopathic, predator class that's in power. I'm not talking about the people you disagree with ideologically that voted for Donald Trump or that support a right-wing government in, in Canada or wherever else. I'm talking about the actual people with power because the left doesn't fucking understand power. They have no idea like about power. And that is far more dangerous because as Robert F. Kennedy Jr. did say in his speech, you can't hide from that. You, can't, you cannot hide from these people coming in and seizing your bank assets or freezing them and, and taking down your insurance. You can't hide from that. You can hide from a soldier coming in, but you can't hide from the surveillance state because it's this part of this technocratic, um, just gigantic monster that we've created as a society due to the advances in big tech and of course the advances in power by the surveillance state. So that's that's something that a lot of I think on the left they don't think about that. Yep, yep. Um, and you know, I got to think about you know 
other people who kind of said that they always wanted to stand behind the system, seeing how it can be manipulated in this way, right? Like, you know, when the person has the key, who has the keys to the car takes the car out for a drive, in this case being Justin Trudeau, saying, let's see what we can do over here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's, uh, let's test our, let's test the waters and kind of seize money. I mean, it's gotta be fucking scary because like, it's like I told my mom, my mom always used to say, uh, prepare for a rainy day. God forbid something happens. Well, at the convo couch, we didn't prepare for fascism. We didn't prepare for censorship because it's something you never think we'd come to here in the West who used to always say, oh, you know, uh, it's about our freedoms. We're allowed to say these things. We're allowed to support the things we want. No, right now, it, it seems to be like this kind of moment in time, this moment in history where the shit is hit the top of the hill and it's about to slide all the way down right now. Uh, and it's very scary to see what's in the future right now. You know what I'm saying? And I love this next tweet you have over here because this is so true. Can you just imagine? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's because the United States and Canada that always facts the United States. I mean, they're our closest ally. They're our neighbor. There's so many people that live here and there. I, so, you know, it's just, it's, it's pretty much like an extension almost in some aspects. Um, imagine if Putin, right, and Maduro and Assad and Xi Jinping forced banks to freeze people's accounts on a whim because they say they supported, uh, you know, they supported something that was anti-government um, without any legal protocols, without impunity. How long would it take for the United States to say, oh, we have to go back in there and not just the United States, but their NATO allies, which are, include Canada, uh, allow, how would they allow before they would say, we got to go in there and, and restore democracy and stop the human rights abuses and the human rights violations? Let's just put that into perspective, because what's happening in Canada is such a big deal. But you don't have the mainstream media really talking about it the way we're talking about it. You have them talking about it as, well, Trudeau is restoring order to to uh, these the, to Canada because of these fascist protesters, blah, blah, blah. Ties. And you still have a bunch of the fucking idiotic left talking about the right wing connections to these like right now in the middle of this happening. They're still talking about that. Now, if that pissed me off that they were talking about it in the beginning, like they were fra mis you know, framing this a certain way, that it wasn't because it, it, it wasn't a monolithic protest. I mean, or none of these are, right? Not, none of them. None, no protest movement that I have seen has ever been monolithic, okay? And so, I, I, again, I defended Black Lives Matter saying, yes, there's a lot of co-option going on, but it's not monolithic. There are people there who are really actually trying to do something to call attention to what's happening. But no, now they turn around and they continue to push and harp on the fact that this is a right wing, blah, 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 in the midst of this happening. So just imagine, and a lot of these people, they know about imperialism. Why don't you recognize how imperialistic they say it's just because it's, it's a, a, a country doing it to its own people, does it make it any less of something that's not part of the empire. This is the empire doing what empire does, but to its own people. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people still talk in this guff are never gonna re they're never going to rebound from this right over here because you know when the chips were down and when it took a lot of guts to speak the truth, you decided to sit there and still continue to play team sports. People are not going to trust you because of it. And, and, and you're, you know what I'm saying? A lot of these people, I, I, they haven't even gone out to a lot of these protests that we've gone out to and speak to these people and see what's going on. I mean, we have a different perspective, fam, because we actually go there and speak to people, even when it's people we that think differently than us. You know, there's footage of the Convo Couch going into a freedom rally, talking to people who think very differently than us, disagree with them on a lot of things, but you go and you get a sense for what they're standing for, what they're all about. You know what I'm saying? And, and you talk to them. And like you said, it's never monolithic, right? It's never like, okay. And, and what is really, if we sat here and we did a test that we took 100 people, we gave them 20 questions, let's say 25 questions on all the issues. Are we going to ever have two people that match up almost identical on everything? Probably not. Probably not. So no matter what, I mean, we have to have the ability to have uncomfortable, we have to be comfortable with uncomfortable conversations. I used to say that a lot. I'm going to say it again. But even though people think differently than us on certain issues, when it's time to stand up for actual freedom, you know what I'm saying? For actual fucking uh, pro-labor, then we have to do it, despite 
what the, the what some of those people, their core ideology might be. And yeah, I feel bad for those people because they're never going to rebound from it, fam. And just to push more of this hypocrisy in, right? I mean, by the way, Defiant L was an account that was really popular and they were taken off of Twitter, um, which is, again, just this constant censorship, this constant just uh, taking of accounts down for pretty much saying the truth. And here's Justin Trudeau 10 years ago. So this is the 10 year challenge that everybody's doing with their selfies, but really a selfie of Trudeau's words. He said in 2012, when a government starts trying to cancel dissent or avoid dissent is when it's rapidly losing its moral authority to govern. Harper in 2005, so he was quoting, right? And then flash forward to this today, this February, 2020. I want to be very clear about what we are and are not doing by invoking the Emergencies Act and how taking this step will help get the situation under control. In case you missed our announcement earlier today, watch this. And of course, he says, he starts talking about how the Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies, <laughs> as, if, as if law enforcement agencies need strength and support. I mean, and not to mention the fact that Canada's law enforcement agencies don't even compare to ours. But I mean, the United States, of course, now has a precedent taken by another country very close to its own that it can use on, and it's, it's already taking those actions per the, the latest terrorist uh, bulletin that, that we went over last week, right? Yeah. And and so what, what we're seeing here is yet another liberal hypocrisy that often happens with these people where they, they, and they don't admit it. They don't say they've changed. They don't say, I, I believe this is a different, no, they just, they were never there. They, they were trying to get people to come on their side. And then as soon as they, they seize power, they turn their back, which is what always happens with neoliberals because scratch a liberal and what do you get? You get a fascist. And so, um, Ow. my issue with the left, with a lot of, and I say left, and people get mad that I say left, but it is the U.S. left. It is the American left because the vast majority of the narrative on the left is dominated by these people. It's dominated by, not dominated by us. We're, we're being called fringe, we're being called the alt-left, we're being called whatever, a fascist, Nazi balls, whatever. Like, so it's not, we're like, even if we are the quote real left, we're not, we're not a large representation of it in North America. What is the left as people know the left to be is the vast majority of these little fascists that have been cheering this on. And Kyle Kalinske wrote a tweet that pissed me off because he has been extremely like either silent or cheering on of the, 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 the mandate situation, but specifically jumping into the whole, oh, these protests are right wing and blah, 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 bullshit. And I think that's complicity because th this is what allowed us to get here, to get into this situation. And he said, Canada trying to freeze the bank accounts of trucker protesters with zero due process and oversight. Calling them terrorists is the precedent that will be used against any and all protests. Well, no shit. This is, this is what we've been talking about. This is why you don't call people who disagree with you alt-right or Nazis or any of this stuff. This is why you don't stay silent when a bunch of journalists are talking about, hey, maybe these vaccine mandates are a little bit authoritarian. This is why somebody that's an influencer doesn't shouldn't stay silent on that. And he's saying you have to oppose it regardless of what you think of the substance of the protest. And that's the issue. Yes, you have to oppose it regardless of what you think of the substance of the protest. But there's nothing wrong with the substance of the fucking protest. The substance of the protest is literally fighting against this very thing. Because the, the, whole, the whole point of mandates is what? They're removing a person's uh, choice to have bodily autonomy. And so why, why does that matter to so many people? Well, because if the government's going to tell me what I put in my body, then that's a step over. So I'm going to stop it before it gets to the next step. And guess what happened? That's exactly what the government did. They went over to the next step. And so if you're not supporting the, 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 per, like the people's right to, to have a say in what they get due to these, to these vaccines that have come under so much scrutiny, and like, then what do you, what do you, you know, like, this falls on deaf ears. And I feel like this happens all the time. These people are Johnny come lately's and you don't get a fucking cookie every time you come in and state the obvious 
that a lot of people have been stating forever just to protect your brand. Now you're shifting because you see, oh shit, this is really bad actually. And if I don't say something now, I'm gonna look like a prick and I'm gonna lose credibility. Well, no, you've already lost credibility because it's not any, no longer enough for you to only shift when you're just trying to save your ass. This is this, this, because these people have so much influence that they allow this narrative to continue and you don't longer get any sort of accolade from, from me, but it's, you shouldn't get accolades from people for basically uh, stating something that should have been stated long before. And I'm gonna read Max's take, Pasta, before I hand it over to you. He said, these takes remind me of the left Syria regime changers who spent day and night smearing proponents of the CIA's dirty war, but claimed to oppose direct U.S. military intervention as soon as the bombs started to fall in Damascus. Vaccine mandates are the basis of the biosecurity regime. And if you, if you, if you began okaying vaccine mandates and, and, the, and the biosecurity of the regime, like, then it's going to get worse from there. So you're manufacturing consent in essence, for this to continue. It's just like it's just like what it is with imperialism. And he says, if you're a left influencer who repeatedly mocked and belittled those who oppose mandating a non-sterilizing, and this is this is his quote, uh, COVID vaccine, you bear responsibility for suppressing left dissent against imperial technocrats now imposing emergency law to crush those protesting the mandates. So again, this is this is I 100 percent agree. I'm yeah. with him on that, especially because we got a ton of shit for saying this shit from the beginning. Yeah. And so somebody, Johnny come lately comes in and he's like, oh, this is bad. Oh, Kyle, see, he gets it now. No, he doesn't fucking get it. He's shifting his stance because he sees his brand is in jeopardy. And you guys have to start recognizing those people. Ow. Um, yeah, I think the argument would be that they can say that they're being nuanced about the situation, that they say, like, okay, this is a public health issue, and we need to get this done to get to herd immunity. We have to protect ourselves because the science says that this is necessary. But then they get to a point, well, okay, you know, we feel that way, but you could be nuanced about it and say, well, seizing bank accounts now is going too far. I mean, that's going to be their argument as opposed to where you and Max are kind of saying, no, no, no. You don't get to be Johnny come lately, come in the room, get that cookie, because you, in actuality, helped create the environment for us to get to this process, to get to this point. In other words, if you had stood up and say, wait, mandates aren't good no matter what across the board, because it should be something that's very obvious, um, we wouldn't be here right now to a point where they the elites or the ruling class felt enough justification from you people over here that they can get to a point where they can start seizing bank accounts, right? And you're looking at it as like, uh-uh, you're not fooling us. Now you want to talk. Now you want to come in the room. Now you want to stand up for civil liberties. Now you want to stand up for freedom. At the uh, In the beginning, you were chastising all of us when we were saying, hey, man, it's going to get to this point, right? The Johnny come fucking latelys. When we've been saying for years, yo, Vaccine passports are coming if we keep on fucking going down this fucking road. We need to stop it right here. Am I correct when I'm when I'm when I'm did I analyze that properly? <laughs> yeah, and it's not only and you did, and it's not only that. It's the fact that by uh, by by not allowing the protesting to stand on its own, you're still allowing that manufacturing of consent to be well. If somebody if I don't like somebody's what they're protesting for, then I'm going to allow some sort of authoritarian overreach. This is due to the, the compliance of, of a lot of a great portion of the left, because I've seen more of the right speak out against it for, for wrong, for better or worse. But they, you know, but it, and it's not like they don't have their own fucking blind spots because they do. And it's, they're terrible when it comes to Trump and when it comes to a lot of these, you know, these theories that are absolutely wrong but like it's it's the reality that the left is like so just it focused on their ideology that they're still cheering for this and we're going to go over what those people are cheering for but yeah. this is just what i said to reiterate this point i said kyle like many influencers lefters leftists spent this entire time shitting on those against the mandates and the covid narrative but now that it's painstakingly obvious how bad this is comes right before dawn with an obvious take 
This authoritarian disaster is a result of the left's com compliance because the left was saying these are a bunch of right wing fascist Nazis. And look at all these tweets from these so called, uh, you know, leftist journalists that I s support. Look at, look, they're right. Look, they're, they're tying, they're, they're showing the money lines. There were no money lines shown. There were just a few people that were right wing or that somebody had said some racist things and they happened to be there. That does not tie into the whole protest being this fascist all right thing, but they're still doing it and they're still going to do it. And these people played into it and they were like super silent on it or they didn't support it. And by doing that, you're allowing this to continue. You're allowing that to become a reality. And furthermore, if on your show, if you have a show like Kyle does or, or multiple shows and you're not talking about vaccine mandates. You're not talking about the fourth industrial revolution. You're not talking about what's really behind the COVID narrative. Then you're, you're not only doing a disservice to your audience, you're, you like what you haven't been talking about that. And now you come in and you, you pretend that this is something you care about. No, this is just you shifting your brand. So protecting your brand so you can continue pretending that you're some sort of progressive and so you can have this, well, I'm, I'm going to stand against that. You know, now that I see the bombs coming on these people, because these, this is a gigantic fucking bomb that's being dropped. Now I'm going to say something. Well, it's a little too late. And normally I'm like, yeah, well, I'm glad people joined us, even if they're late. But this isn't that. They're not rectifying their ways. They're not saying I was wrong. I should have supported this. No, like, oh, this is just wrong. But... I'm not going to say anything about that. I'm going to say regardless of how you feel about the protests. Yeah, I, I, I also so think that it's, it's yeah. the tactics too, fam. I just want to say real quick, it's just the tactics that were used in the get-go. Like, yeah, it is a little bit like now you're coming in Johnny Gunn lately, yet when, you know, and it's almost like what we saw in Syria, right? Like the whole, yeah, yeah. Assad is a brutal dictator, but no, 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 you, you dismiss so much stuff in between that, like, and then have nuanced conversations in early debate Instead, you just dismiss people uh, on that stance because you want to wear the cloak of virtuosity. And now it's so late that now you want to come in the door. So I really think that the that no matter what, moving forward for some of those people who maybe been fence sitters versus people who immediately use the tactic of cancel culture and saying those people are stupid so quickly, the solution is early debate. Early debate from the get-go so we understand of all sides so we don't get to a point where our jumping off it's like, well, yeah, this is bad now. No shit, it's bad. We said everything leading up to this was bad, and now we're here talking about this when we should be talking. We're talking about A, B. We're not talking about A, B, C, or D. We're talking about E because we refuse to talk about A, B, C, and D. So I, I hear yeah. you. I get you. And I, I got to agree with you on most situations. There are some people who have now said some stuff like I talked about. I'm like, well, I'm glad she's there now. You know what I'm saying? Different than some other people and the tactics they used early on and why we ended up in this jumping off spot. Sorry, fam, go ahead. No, I mean, you're right. I mean, I think there's a difference between people admitting like that they were wrong and, and people just sort of like snakily just saying, oh, this is bad without taking any accountability. Um, so, but they, it gets worse because there are people that are cheering this on, right? Full on cheering this on. And this is Lee Carter. He served as a representative for the Virginia State House. He was a progressive that a lot of people supported. I thought he was cool early on. Um, that ended a while ago based on a lot of his stances, particularly the Trump derangement syndrome that started. Um, but he said, one of history's biggest lessons for the left, the capitalist state doesn't suppress fascists often. So when it happens, fucking let it happen. Don't jump on in on the side of the fascists. That first Hitler, then Archer shit has never worked. And then on the second tweet, he later says, enjoy the break. Enjoy that it's on them and not on you. What are you talking about? You know, this is the most idiotic, moronic tweet I think I've seen in a long time. Fucking let it happen. Don't jump in on the side of the fascists. He's jumping in on the side of the fascists. You, you know, he's, he's labeling thousands of people, by the way, as all fascists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so th not only that, but now he's saying, don't jump in on the side of the fascists, but let it happen. No. So, so what? What are the people that are in power that are imposing these authoritarian, um, not just mandates, but now government overreach through the Emergencies Act? What are they not fascists and authoritarian? They have far more power than the people you're calling a bunch of Nazis and a bunch of fascists. 
So what, what, where do you get this? Like, it's just, just like complete and total devoid of any sort of logic here because the people in power are imposing these restrictions, imposing these draconian measures are the ones that are fascist. And you're siding with them, Lee. You're siding with them. And of course, when I said something to him, he completely blocked me. <laughs> and and Look at the mentality, that, that tribe's mentality yeah. right there. And, and, that, and I'm saying the tribe, being, because they all act this way, fam. Go ahead. No, I was just saying he, he completely uh, blocked me, right? When, when uh, I, I pretty much went out, I said, you know, this is, you're supporting fascists. I basically said, you know, you're, you're really, you're the one that's coming on, on here and, and doing this. And to me, it's just, it's just, it's just reminiscent of where the left is at, Basta. I mean, I think a large majority of the left is here. Like, this is where they're at. They're, they're, they're at the point where they, they're cheering, they're so blinded by this sort of ideology, like this faith to their, their ideology that isn't even a valid existence of what the ideology was supposed to represent anyway. Yeah. Like they're maligning it to the point where people, nobody's gonna wanna join their side. Like, well, who's gonna join your fucking revolution when you act, you're acting like a little, like a little fascist? You're acting like a cop. You're act, <laughs> like, I thought all cops are bastards, right? And it's not, and they're not. I mean, according to these people, right? That this is, yeah, it's just lunacy. Well, fam, what we'll do is we're gonna skip, we're gonna hold on to the chief stuff. We have two more slides and then we'll bring our guest on in and we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on there. So Oz, we'll table the chief stuff until after, since we, we ran a little bit long on this, this subject. There's something I just put up to fam as well. I kind of added in my quick tweet. Uh, it, I said, a country's so free that Big Brother can come in at any time and freeze your financial assets, including crypto. Uh, I don't know how they're gonna do it about Bitcoin. I'm gonna wonder how they're gonna get around that. But I just wanna plug that little thing real quick. Uh, this is the first test, and I and I want to point this out there because this is the first test of the global leaders to see how strong their grip is post-COVID, right? About when it comes to finances, what can they do? How can they shut shit down? If you have a big protest with trucks in the streets, how do you stop this? But it's also a test for we, the people, to see how we get around these measures, how we fight back, and how we take control, aside from those people who want to believe that this is just a whole right wing funded nationalist fucking movement and stuff like that. But I believe, I believe you have some footage fam of some of these nationalists. No. Me? Yeah. Didn't you put some footage of the nationalist in there? Oh yeah. Fire? Let's just play this video yeah. to show you all these right wing racist Nazis. And then we'll go on to our guests that's here. Exactly. There you go. From, from where in Alberta? Uh, Bikani First Nation in southern Alberta, okay. uh, near Lethbridge area. Why are you here? To help spread the message to people back home about what's actually really going on here and how it affects them. Do you want to do it? Give me a kiss. Nice. I haven't kissed anybody. Well, other than my wife, other than my wife. Sure, things could do. I bet they can get water to all those Christian communities. Yeah, they can do. We want the water. We want the water. We promised all those years ago. Viva la Francais, fam. Wahadaha. I love Viva la Fry. I subscribe to him. Yeah, so, I mean... And there's so many videos he put up to kind of dispel the narrative, but that's just one that was quick that I chose. But you can go through his uh, Twitter feed. You can go through his YouTube videos and see what the media was saying. It's completely false. But people don't do that. They just say, they'll go and say, oh, he's not a leftist, so we might as well throw him out, like, just because he's not a leftist. There's a lot of things I don't agree with Viva Fry, by the way, on. But he was there. <laughs> And, I know, I yeah. know, and I know, but <laughs> the thing about it is, is Viva Fry is one of those great examples of a guy who you're not going to agree with, but you can see he's a beautiful, wholehearted guy. He's always been looked upon that way. And when he goes out to the streets, the way he talks to people and everything like that, that's that's the way to kind of look, I think, through a lens where people always have this image of like, oh, you know, uh, they've been told that this is the way a right winger is and they're awful and racist kind of people and stuff like that, where you can see a guy as lovable as that who you can disagree with at times but still realize that we're just humans on this planet 
uh, under control of the ruling class that is trying to shape the narrative the way they want to, so therefore that they can hold on to all the power and the resources. 